All right, I'm out here today in the cold with my 300 blackout, and I thought I would show you guys something a little interesting. Uh, you know, when it comes to load development and shooting the blackout, if you're gonna shoot suppressed, ideally you wanna shoot subsonic, right? So a lot of people say, you know, you have to have the big heavy bullets, the 200 plus grain bullets to shoot subsonic suppressed, and then still have an AR-15 cycle. And that's not necessarily true. A lot of it's gonna come down to your particular rifle and a little bit of load development. You know, there's a lot of powders that are fairly popular. Uh, I've mainly used Hogden 110 myself and Accurate Arm 1680. Uh, the 110 basically ended up being my uh, lightweight supersonic powder. And I don't use that a lot now that I have a suppressor. What I typically use is Accurate Arm 1680. And it's not necessarily the best powder out there. Uh, I'm definitely interested in trying out Hodgdon's new CFE blackout powder. But what I wanted to show you is basically my plinking load, my kind of go-to inexpensive blackout load. And I know a lot of you may not think of the blackout as plinking, but with the suppressor on, this is just so much fun to shoot at steel targets, at silhouette targets, that to me, I think of that as plinking. I may be training, but I don't currently use this blackout for home defense or anything like that. So it's really more for fun, for the fact that I can chew really quiet, suppressed subsonic ammo. So what I want to do is I want to show you my load. Now, obviously, you're going to have to get your own loads. You have to work up your own, be safe in how you do it. In fact, with subsonic ammo, you often work down start with a known load and work down to it so that you don't get a bullet stuck in the barrel but I want to show you my hundred and fifty grain load with accurate arm 1680 I use 10.5 grains of powder and in the hot weather I end up averaging around 1095 feet per second I'm not sure exactly what the the speed is out here right now it's probably about 20 degrees and with wind chill, it's probably 10 or less. But we're gonna show you, I've got 10 rounds loaded up in this magazine, 10 in another, and let's take a look at it. Let's shoot 10 with, out the can on, and then we'll shoot another 10 with, and we'll show you the function of this subsonic load. Here we go. There you go. That's a subsonic load, 300 blackout, only 150 grain bullet. I'll show you some, some images of it, but that's just, it's a cheap full metal jacket, 115 grain bullet. So, we're on safe, action's open. Let's go ahead and put the Omega on. Okay, getting a little tight. Okay, everything's threaded on, ready to go. Now I'm gonna leave my ears on, because as you can hear, there's some other shooters, and it seems like, you know, they bring out the bigger stuff every time I try to take my ears off, so. All right, 300 blackout, 150 grain subsonic, now suppressed. There you go. I know that's only a small sample size, that's only 20 rounds, but rapid fire, semi-auto, every single one of them fed with the can, without the can, and both locked the bolt back after the last round. So, this is a 16 inch barrel with a pistol length gas system. Uh, I used to run the same load with my 300 Whisper 300 221 clone back before the blackout came out. So you can find a subsonic load for lightweight bullets. It may just take a little bit of time at the range to find it. But for me, 10.5 grains, accurate arm 1680, subsonic 150 grain functions just fine. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, have a great day. Get out and shoot.